In this video, we're going to take a look at position equations that we can get from uh, analyzing the velocity versus time graphs area. So go ahead and sketch velocity versus time graph. Then we're going to mark some initial point, v0. And it's going to go to some final velocity that we'll just kind of mark arbitrarily as v. If I take this shape and break it up into a rectangle and a triangle, then I can analyze the areas of both of these uh, to come up with an equation that will ultimately tell me how to find the displacement that an object has gone through. Because remember that the area of a velocity versus time graph is displacement. Okay, so let's start by looking at the um, square, the rectangle. The rectangle has a height of v0 and a width of whatever time t this happens to be at. We can just call it t. It starts at 0, goes to t. So rectangles have an area of base times height. Uh, and in that case, let's just go ahead and say v0 times t. I mean, maybe that's like saying height times base, but it's the same thing. So the area of the rectangle is v0 times t. So we'll call that maybe delta x1 v0 times t. Okay, then this triangle right here, this triangle would follow the equation half of the base times height, or half of the height times base. Um, the base of the triangle is still going to be t, but the height, um, the height is actually going to be delta v, because we're going from v0 to v, and this would represent the change from that initial velocity to the final velocity. v0, I'm sorry, delta v is v0 minus v, v minus v0. Um, so now I can use delta v or v minus v0 and t as my base and height. So we'll do one half, we'll start with the height, v minus v0 times t, the base. And I know that this, we can call it delta x2, displacement of the triangle portion would be half of v minus v0 times t. Okay, so if I want the total area, which that's what we'll call delta x, then I just need to add those two things together. Uh, let's start with one half v minus v naught t plus v naught times t. Normally, we don't use the equation in this form. We try and uh, simplify it a little bit so that it's something a little more easier to remember. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to distribute the 1 half so that we're going to get uh, 1 half v times t minus 1 half v naught times t and then add v naught t. Uh, now, if I combine these two terms right here, I'm going to get v naught times t minus half of a v naught times t. That's just going to give me a positive v naught times t. If that didn't make sense, maybe pause for a second and think about why these two are going to turn into half of a v naught times t. Okay, um, after I've done this, I'm going to pull the 1 half, I'm sorry, pull the v and the v naught out. So I have 1 half times v plus v naught and put the t on the outside. Okay, so that is delta x equals 1 half v plus v naught times t. This is an easy to memorize uh, position equation that we'll use very often. And occasionally what I'll do with that delta x, which remember delta x is x minus x naught. Occasionally what I'll do is I'll write x minus x naught equals 1 half v plus v naught times t. Uh, and I will just add x naught to the end. Because that gives me an equation for position. Um, that like I could graph if I wanted to, uh, or I could think 
not necessarily in terms of my displacement, the change of my position, but I can think what is my actual position. Uh, sometimes you'll see me write it this way with the x naught at the end instead of in the delta x. Okay, there is another equation that we can actually get if we go back. So let me erase some of this stuff. Okay, there we go. Um, if we actually leave the 1 half v minus v naught times t, or I'm sorry, change it into delta v. So v minus v naught, let's just make that delta v. Um, I can replace this with an acceleration uh, equation. So remember that acceleration is the change in velocity over the change in time. And if I wanted to get delta b, delta v by itself, I would multiply both sides by delta t and get delta v equals the acceleration times the change in time, which for us, um, you can think of this really as just t because for our equations, if we just assume the initial time is zero, then it just looks like t. Like if I wrote delta t, oops, sorry, uh, is t minus t not some initial time. As long as I assume my initial time is zero, I can just get rid of it and call delta t t. Okay, so now I can plug in a times t for my delta v equation, one half a sorry this would give us one half a t times t plus v naught t which of course I could write that as one half a t squared plus v naught times t okay so this is our second position equation that is super useful for us because I can look at the displacement of an object uh, if I know its initial velocity and its acceleration. Now again it's common for me to write this as x equals one half a t squared plus v naught t plus x naught well, because I've taken the x naught from delta x and added it to the right side um, so that I get more of a graphable equation. Okay, so just give yourself some sort of like review, maybe, <laughs> of these two equations. Just put in like a box somewhere that the important equations you need to know from this are delta x equals one half v plus v naught times t, and delta x equals one half a t squared plus v naught t. Okay, those are our super useful equations for finding displacement. Um, and if you want to think of these as graphable equations, all you need to do is add x naught. So you would get x equals one half v plus v naught t plus x naught, or x equals one half a t squared plus v naught t plus x. These are graphable versions of the equations. Okay, now let's take a look at some example problems where we use these new equations. Marty McFly, the physics fly, is four meters left of a Taco Bell and traveling two meters a second to the right when he begins to speed up at a rate of four meters per second squared. What is his position after six seconds? Okay, so for this problem it tells me that um, four meters left of a Taco Bell, that's going to be an initial position. So I'll write x naught equals, and since it's left, it would be negative. Then um, it tells me he's traveling two meters a second to the right. So I would write that as v naught equals, um, and that's going to be a positive two meters a second. Then he speeds up at a rate of four meters per second squared. That gives me the acceleration. Um, and I know that in order for him to speed up, the direction of the acceleration has to be the same as the velocity. So here I see that the velocity is positive, therefore I know the acceleration also needs to be positive so that he's speeding up. If for some reason it said that he was traveling left, then that would be a negative two speed, or sorry, velocity, and I would need to make my acceleration negative. 
um, because same direction, that's when they speed up. Opposite directions, that's when they slow down. Okay, so I have, I'm going to get rid of this just so it's a little cleaner. Velocity, initial velocity, acceleration, initial position, and time. It tells me six seconds. Then it says um, that I need to find his position. So what I would do is I would write x equals question mark. Now I have all of my variables, the stuff that's given to me and the one thing that's unknown that I need to find. At this point, I would look at my equations and see if I have an equation that has all of these variables in it. Go ahead and look at the two equations that you just wrote down um, that we derived together. You'll notice that this equation has all of the variables. What I'm going to do is take delta x, instead of writing delta x, add x dot to the right. And now I see that solving this problem is as simple as plugging in my information. 4 meters a second squared times 6 seconds. Square that 6 seconds. Make sure you square that 6 first in your calculator, you know, your aunt PEMDAS or whatever. Uh, and then the initial velocity of 2 meters a second times 6 seconds plus, and this is where you got to be careful about the negative, negative 4 meters. Okay, so 6 times 6 is 36, um, and half of 4 is 2, and 2 times 36 is 72. So 72. Um, what you're going to get here is, I'll write it like this, 36 seconds squared, the second squared cancel. So that leaves you with meters. Plus 2 times 6 is 12, plus or minus 4 meters, which gives you uh, 72 plus 12 is 84, minus 4 is 80. So the position at 2 seconds, I'm sorry, 6 seconds, the position at 6 seconds is 80 meters. All right, let's do another one. Okay, Bill Eyelash is at a stoplight when they decide to floor it. After 10 seconds, Bill has the zoomies going 4 meters a second. How far has Bill gone in that time? All right, so at this point, they don't really give you an initial position. Um, so when it asks how far, really what that means is it wants you to find the displacement um, and to just tell us what the number of the displacement is. If, like, you end up getting, I don't know, maybe negative 100, then the far means just 100. You wouldn't have to include the negative for a final answer. Or like if it was a multiple choice question, um, there might not be a negative answer, and you would need to know that the negative isn't important when it says how far. Okay, so we're finding displacement and then ignoring if it's negative. Um, and it gives us a time, 10 seconds, and it gives us a final speed, so we'll call that V, of 40 meters a second. Uh, and it says that they're at a stoplight, which means their initial velocity is zero. Okay, at this point, I would look at all of my equations and see if there's one that has all of these variables in it. And if you look at the two equations that we've learned in this video, there is an equation that has all these variables in it. And again, I don't actually have to rearrange this equation at all. It's very simple. So I would plug in my final velocity of 40 meters a second, and 0, and then multiply by 10. So 40 plus 0 is 40. Half of 40 is 20. 20 times 10 is 200. Wow, that's funny. I should have just said 200 instead of 100. All right, and in this case, um, it would be a positive 200 meters. So our answer, we don't have to ignore the negative. It just is 200 meters, and you have used this equation. Um, one last thing to note. When we think about the different parts of these equations, um, what I mean by that is like one part represents the area of this box, uh, and the other part represents the area of this triangle. They are meaningful. Um, the V naught T part, this guy right here, this represents how far you would have gone if you didn't speed up. 
so that area represents if you just moved with a constant velocity how far would you go the triangle the one half a t squared part this represents the extra distance that you are gaining by speeding up um, and if it was a negative acceleration and it went down then it would represent the distance that you aren't gaining because you're slowing down um, just wanted to point that out because these different shapes have sort of significant physical meanings you have endured the maths congratulations bill eyelash is proud of you and you are done with this video